Hey guys, Darren back again for 2017. My gaming area needs a desperate cleanup, so I've got stuff everywhere, and we're going to look at cleaning all that up. We're also going to look at adding some uh, cooling fans to the back of these uh, shelves to pull some air through, and get rid of some old consoles I just don't use, give it a good clean, and tidy up all these cables. Stay tuned, and let's go through it. So let's go over this guys, we've got, you know, I've got consoles and junk down in here that I don't even really use, uh, I'll reconnect all them and get them working, everything's filthy, uh, you know, look at the dust and crap on everything, so we'll give that a good clean, um, I've got, you know, consoles out in the wrong spots that make it difficult to use, um, what's this 32X doing there, I've already got one, I don't know why I've got that out, so... I'm trying to give all that a good tidy up and uh, get rid of these junky consoles I don't use. Um, the cable situation is quite out of control, so there's too many cables running everywhere. I'm going to give that a really good tidy up and maybe put some labels and things on it. Uh, and then look at some cooling for the cabinet as well. So my main consoles will sit in here, the PS3, PS4 and Xbox One. And I want to cut a hole in the back of this uh, panel and mount some uh, 120 millimeter PC cooling fans. So that's the type of fan I'm going to mount, um, and we'll control them all off a switch and get them get some airflow happening. I found these uh, fans like a box of four actually. I found it at a PC store, quite cheap. Um, I use one on my current PC, so I've got three left. And I thought, you know, I may as well use those spare fans for these shelves. So. Uh, Looking at the specs just quickly, they're 12 volt fans. Now I've got this PC fan controller. So this is an optional piece. I just had this in my toolkit of parts. It's got a really handy um, fan speed controller and a fan three pin header. So with a simple adapter cable, that will run the whole thing. So I've just pulled the cabinet out and I'll do a little, just check where we're gonna mount these things actually. So. Uh, there's a few cables and things in the way, but the big round hole you see there is just where the cables run through, like HDMI, the networking cables and so forth. So ideally, you know, that's a shelf right there. Ideally, we need to mount it over to the side here. Uh, that's a side panel of the frame of the case, and there's one on the bottom there as well. So if we cut a big square hole around about here, um, three holes, one here, you know, and two more below it, that'll probably be a good place to mount them. We'll use a couple of screws and it should all be pretty straightforward. So I marked all this out just roughly. I just got a pencil out of a line and we'll get the cutting tool out and we'll give that a bit of a go and uh, see how, see what sort of mess we can make. Um, got a little portable vacuum, which I'll turn on when I actually do the cutting just to catch as much of the dust and stuff as possible. So the cutting tool I've got is um, reciprocating sort of blade uh, from AEG and um, you know, just a 12 volt, uh, sorry, 18 volt uh, battery pack. These things are really handy because they cut nice straight lines and they cut through all sorts of different material. Um, so I'll just mark out a line here and I'll mark one vertically as well and then I'll go ahead and cut these out properly. Okay, it's probably time to switch on the old vacuum. And let's get on with this now. Now I'll just do a quick final measurements, work out where to cut and give it a good, and cut it right through. Okay, so with those all cut out, the pieces will just come straight out and we just give it a quick clean with the vacuum and just get all the rough edges off. Now, the actual mounting of these things, um, 
probably only needs to use two screws, one on each corner. Uh, but that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So uh, I just grabbed some wood screws that I had on my workbench, just some basic ones that will just feed through the hole and just, you know, bite into the, the wood behind. That's all we're going to need today. Um, yeah, just two screws I think will be fine. So I'll go ahead and mount these up and we'll see how it all looks. All right, so here's two mounted and the third one will go just above it. Um, I might reroute the actual power cables through the cabinet first. Okay, so to wire this thing up, <clears throat> I thought, you know, I'm, I, I'm actually gonna power my homemade satin power supply off the, uh, you know, off the one we showed on a previous video, uh, 12 volts, five amps. So I may as well tap in to this power supply off its uh, DC barrel jack and you know put a corresponding jack on the other end and just tap off 12 volts so that's what I'm kind of getting at uh, I've got this Y splitter adapter cable here which just goes from one end which will go to the power supply and the other end will go simply to the satin when I need it and one end into this fan supply constantly so they'll actually be always plugged in one to the satin one to the fan and uh, just share the 12 volt supply so so what I've done is I've just run just two wires off the the socket yellow for 12 volts black for ground and it comes all the way up to the fan speed controller we looked at earlier and all I've done is I've run uh, the 12 volts in through a little slide switch and into the power input of the uh, you know of this the speed control potentiometer so that's the normal 12 volt feed. All I've done is cut the 12 volts through a switch and just drilled a, a dirty hole on one side just so I can literally switch this on and off. So it just cuts the 12 volt feed. That's all it does. Now uh, that's all you need to do. And the output is a nice convenient three pin header. So if we grab our test fan and plug that in, we're obviously going to have three fans hanging off this, which is fine. But for testing, plug that in. Uh, the fan spins away. And we've got control. So we can switch it on and off. So wait for that to spin down. That's off. And spin up. So with the, I'm just flicking that switch there. It's pretty handy. And of course, we've got speed control. The thing is, these particular fans, these course, uh, these Cooler Master 12 volt silent fans, you know, they're they're really um, they're really silent. So I don't think you can even hear that running. That's really cool. But um, you know, I can I can vary the speed if I wanted to slow it down. And there we go. That's better. Now, just touching the fan with my finger. And as I adjust the speed control, it slows down. But to be honest, I'm gonna probably run this on full speed. Run it up on full speed because uh, they blow a bit of air, but they they work best at 12 volts, and it's almost silent anyway. I can't really hear it. So this 12, like this um, PC fan control board was really handy you don't have to use one i just used it because it had a nice simple fan header and i didn't have to cut the fan wires off after all and also i'm going to mount this up under the tv cabinet just so i've got a nice convenient uh, on off switch and that's just a hole drilled with a normal drill through the metal and the switch is just literally super glued in on the back uh, and the wires soldered on it's really nothing to it guys so that's how it all hangs together okay so there's a quick mount they all they're all screwed in just two screws on each one uh, all pretty good all spinning and nice airflow uh, it's almost silent now I also picked up this um, three to one fan header connector so you can just get these from a computer store uh, it just allows you to connect three fans off the one uh, three pin header and then that one end goes up to the, the speed controller and we're good to go. Okay, so, and looking inside, I've got the module mounted just up under the uh, 
front here so from the very front I can just uh, you know flick a switch and adjust the speed and you know as you can see there in the background the fan spins up nice so that's pretty much the job done cables run along here uh, all three are connected up they go down through a hole and uh, you know one two three so they're all mounted and everything seems to be running pretty well and what we're left with is uh, a reasonably tidy wiring system so this is the 12 volts coming up from the power supply uh, that's just sitting on the ground down there I've got these little stick on little rubber uh, cable holder things uh, just stop things falling off the back into the wire splitter one end goes down into the socket which is uh, pretty easy and then one end's just sitting here ready to go for the satin which is going to sit uh, you know right about there plug that into the satin jobs done so just split the 12 volt supply there and that should be good to go okay so things are all cleaned up and pretty much back together now I've got the consoles repositioned in the front. You know, we get the PS3 on top, PS4, and Xbox One. And if you look inside, we've got our got our fan, which I'll just switch on. So we've got cooling now for these consoles, which is great. Um, you know, on a hot day, I think it's a really good idea to get some extra ventilation in behind these things and for the rest of the cabinet uh, I've just given it you know a wipe down and a bit of a clean up and I decided to pack up the consoles that I don't actually play so what I'm left with is uh, you know the Sega stack the Mega Drive Mega CD 32X um, Super Nintendo you know the Famicom uh, I like the Japanese one because it runs at 60 Hertz and I've got a Super CIC mod going on in there with you know switchless mod uh, you can see that on another video um, you know and the everdrive of course I've also got the everdrive for this as well um, and that's the provision for the uh, Japanese satin so I've got a PAL satin here but when I need to pull out the Japanese one I can plug the 12 volts straight in and that'll just fire up uh, you know I'll share the SCART cable and uh, you know this is a PAL satin which I do use and I use that for testing as well so I like to have kind of both. Um, NES Classic Mini, of course, uh, new addition to the console range. So that's all HDMI'd, powered and ready to go. And the Dreamcast, uh, you know, arguably one of the best consoles ever made. Why would you not have one out? And then I've got, then I've got my, you know, cheap, shitty SCART boards, one on either side. So that one there is for the CRT and and sort of consoles that need RGB and light guns etc so I just mounted that on the side of the TV and it runs down to the back um, it's also got RCA inputs you know for the, the NES and just the basic sort of composite video um, but obviously RGB I'm actually gonna make a video on these boards and SCART switches soon uh, yes, this is just a cheap one, um, but it does actually work quite well. The key to these things is to get one with physical um, lockout buttons. So when you're using an, one of the inputs, you only ever have one button pushed at a time. This one shares these two connectors and then one for each of the other ones. So if you've got the auto switching ones, they don't actually cut the connections properly and they can cause interference. But So if you're gonna buy a cheap one, get the one with a physical cutoff so the buttons actually click in and out and make a physical disconnection and generally they work quite well so I'll go through that another in another video and I'll also show you a little hack that I like to do on these um, you do it on the um, you know on the board here and it'll affect all the inputs uh, and it's got to do with the aspect ratio on the TV and uh, this is a 4x3 TV and sometimes the consoles will always power on in widescreen. I hate that. So instead of having to flick the TV back manually to 4x3, you can just uh, modify one of the signals on the SCART pin and have it always set to 4x3. So we'll do that in another video. But, you know, in general, I've tidied all things up. This SCART board is for the consoles that run via a small upscaler, which is hidden down there. Just one of the cheap ones and up to the TV so 
like the Saturn will go into that. Um, so would the Super Famicom. Uh, but the Mega Drive generally goes out to the CRT. I can mix and match them. You know, you can just plug them into different boards. Uh, I want to upgrade my upscaler to a FrameMeister Mini or maybe the open source scan converter. Um, yeah, this is just one of those, you know, $50 cheap upscalers. It does the job generally, but there are there is a you know there is lag on that, so I want to get rid of it and get a better unit. So that's all I pretty much ended up doing. Um, I've got uh, a sub with volume control and speakers. You know, one speaker down in there, one on either side. But generally, everything came up pretty pretty well. And the, the last job I'm going to do is put tags on everything. So I've made these sticker little tags which I'll peel the back off and I'll stick on and what it's going to be is you know all all the power cords all the SCART cables pretty much everything that I want to know what it does without having to hunt around and trace the cables so I think these labels are a great little addition to your console collection because they make your life so much easier you can see what's going on you don't have to trace the cables and you know for not much money it's a great little uh, project to do so I'll get on with that, but you know, you don't need to see me do all that. I'll just quickly show you the label printing. And then that pretty much wraps up the video, guys. Just a bit of a spring clean, even though it's the middle of summer here. Um, something I wanted to do and just rearrange things. And all the consoles I didn't use, they've ended up down in the drawers. They're all still cabled up, like they all will still function. But to be honest, I don't really play them that much. And they're just going to hide away down in there. I've got the Nintendo 64, I've got Xbox original, I've got PS2, I've got Wii, I've got Master System, I've got NES, they're all down in there. Um, the ones that use component video, I actually also wired up to the TV a component video switch box, just with a three position switch. So, you know, one, two, three. Um, so when I want to add consoles that run a component i can just plug them in and it's already cabled up to the tv i don't need to mess about with anything so that's pretty handy for things like the wii and ps2 and xbox original they all use component and uh at this stage that's the best video quality we can get out of them uh, it's also the highest resolution so that's what i do for that so so i hope you enjoy this one guys it's a little bit different to what i normally do but i thought i'd just show you the process and how I clean things up. Bye guys, I'll see you next time.